Welcome to our sunrise service. Hosanna, Hosanna. That's what the people were shouting as Jesus came into Jerusalem. Our story is found in the Gospel of John chapter 12. Let's begin with the word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for this beautiful sunrise hour. We thank you for the word of God. And was, as we open our Bibles, we open our hearts that we might become more like Jesus. Amen. We're in John chapter 12. It's the story of Jesus coming into the city of Jerusalem. It begins actually when Jesus is in Bethany. Six days before the Passover celebration began, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, the man that Jesus had raised from the dead. Everyone knew the story how Jesus had gone to Bethany and Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days. Jesus goes to the tomb. He says, come out. And the dead man is resurrected into life. Oh, everyone knew about Jesus teaching in all the synagogues throughout all of Israel. They knew of his teaching where he fed the 5,000 on the side of the hill. They had heard the teaching of Jesus called the Sermon on the Mount. And when it came to disease and, and, and people being possessed by demons, they knew about the miracles and the signs and the wonders. They knew about Jesus. But when he came to Jerusalem during Passover, they were all still talking about Lazarus being raised from the dead. Now, in chapter 12, verse 12, we're on the next day and news that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem swept through all of the city. A large crowd of Passover visitors took palm branches and they went out to meet him as he came through the gate called the Golden Gate. A Jerusalem is a city of about 30,000 people in that day. But with Passover celebration, it mushroomed to a population of visitors of over 300,000. Unbelievable. Jesus is coming from Bethany just a few miles up the road to Jerusalem. He's coming through the east side. The people so excited spontaneously get the word he's arriving and they run out to meet him. So many events are well organized and planned and people promote things for weeks and months and even years in advance. I want you to get the story here that what's about to happen is completely spontaneous. It's not organized. It's not planned. They just all hear Jesus is coming. Hundreds. It was thousands. Tens of thousands of people are pushing their way out to greet Jesus. Spontaneously, they start picking up palm branches on the way. Palm branches go all the way back to the Greek Empire during the Olympic Games. And when the Olympian won something, he was the victor, they would honor him with palm branches. Jesus is being honored. They are looking for him and his arrival. And the Bible says that spontaneously, thousands and thousands of people begin to shout, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Praise God, save us, save us. They're actually referring to Jesus as the Savior. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hail to the King of Israel. Oh, the story 
is so rich with truth. I, I think of Matthew chapter 16. It's the story of Jesus speaking to the apostles. And he asked them this question, who do men say that I am? And then he asked them a second question that grips my heart. Who do you say that I am? And you see, when the people are shouting Hosanna and where they're saying, save us, save us, speaking to Jesus as the Messiah, the King or the Savior, they're actually answering the question that Jesus asked. Who do you say that I am? And that question grips my heart. It stirs my spirit. And so inspired by the spontaneous crowd shouting Hosanna, I begin to launch into a study in the Bible answering the question, who do you say that I am? And the Passover crowd was saying that Jesus is the Savior. He's the Messiah. He's the King. Jesus is the Christ, translated Messiah. The Anointed One. But then I begin to ponder. I wonder what others say that Jesus, who He is. And I begin to assemble very quickly a list of names and titles. I begin to study this list page after page as, as more than a hundred names and titles begin to be identified in my study. And some were followers of Christ. Others, they just met Jesus. They didn't know who he was, but they quickly give to him a name or a title. Others are writers of the books of the Bible and still a fourth category is Jesus himself. And Jesus actually tells us who he is. Now we start with a story uh, uh, of the people in Jerusalem shouting Hosanna. And the first title we see is Savior or Save Us. But then I go back to the beginning of the book of John. And I, and I started with John. And the author of the Gospel of John writes, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. By divine revelation of the Holy Spirit, for the Bible is the inspired Word of God, John, the author of the Gospel of John, makes the proclamation and the identification that Jesus Christ is the Word. Do you know when you hold in your hand the Word of God, you're holding a book that is holy, it is special, it is going to draw you to Jesus because Jesus is the living Word. I'm reading through the Gospel of John and I'm making this list. Jesus is the Savior. Jesus is the living Word. And then I come down and I discover a man that's actually a follower of Christ, John the Baptist. And he refers to twice. In the Gospel of John chapter 1, he refers to Jesus as the Lamb of God. God. When he sees Jesus coming, he says, behold the Lamb of God. And the next day he sees Jesus coming again. Behold the Lamb of God. Jesus is the Savior. Jesus is the Word. Jesus is the Lamb of God. I find that as these people in Jerusalem were celebrating Passover, they're there to offer up a sacrifice of a Passover lamb. And yet, in John chapter 1, John the Baptist tells us Jesus is the Passover lamb. Oh, I just, 
I try to understand it, that Jesus is the Savior, but Jesus is also the sacrifice. Jesus freely gives himself. In John chapter 10, we read that Jesus is the good shepherd or the gate, but we also read that the shepherd lays down his life. He sacrifices his life. Oh, do you see it? Do you see who Jesus is? Jesus is the Savior. Jesus is the living Word. Jesus is the Lamb of God, the sacrifice. And as I'm working on my list of who Jesus is, I, I come to the story in John chapter 4 of the woman at the well. And Jesus says, I want to offer you springs of living water. And the woman at the well says, you don't even have a bucket or a rope. And Jesus says, well, go get your husband. I don't have a husband. No, you've been married five times and the person you're living with now is not a holy relationship. You're living a wayward life. She responds, you're a prophet. Oh, he knows about the broken relationships, the broken hearts, my fault, her fault, however it happened. He knows the mess that her life is in. She says, you're a prophet. You know everything. This is someone, not an author like John, the apostle of a book of the Bible. Not a man like John the Baptist who's going to baptize Christ, a holy man. Not like those that had gathered for the Passover in Jerusalem shouting, Hosanna. This is a woman it is anything but holy. And she answers the question, who do men say that I am? She answers the question, who do you say that I am? And she says, you are the prophet for you know everything about my life. It's so funny how people think they have a secret from God. In Genesis, Adam and Eve are are, are hiding from God, hiding from God. God's walking through the garden and says, what are you doing hiding from me? Or the story of Jonah where he flees from God and he's running from God like God doesn't know where he's at. God knows everything about you. In this context, the prophet name she gives to him is speaking about all the power that he has, he knows all things. But of course, the prophet also knows the future, and thus Jesus is a prophet. He knows everything that's going to happen in your life. For I know the plans I have for you, Jeremiah 29, 11, not to harm you or hurt you, but to give to you hope and a future. Who do men say? that I am? They say that you're Hosanna, the Savior. They say that you're the living word. They say that you are the Lamb of God. They say that you are the prophet. Oh, what a thrilling study. I'm spending the next 40 days going through a list of a hundred different names found in the Bible for who Jesus is. Many of these names are, are people that meet Christ for the very first time, like the woman at the well. Others are followers of Christ, like John the Baptist, or the Apostle John writing the Gospel of John. Others are those that are godly people, like those that are there for Passover in Jerusalem. But I tell you, what takes my breath away in my journey through the study of who do men say that I am 
is when I begin to identify in Scripture the many, many times that Jesus tells us who he is. Of course, I'm speaking of the story found in the Gospel of John, chapter 6. Jesus is feeding the multitude, 5,000, the bread, the loaves, the fishes. Afterwards, there's this conversation. Do it again, do it again. We want you to provide bread for us every day, just like you did. And Jesus says, I'll tell you who I am. I'll tell you who I am. I am the bread of life. Isn't that incredible? It's incredible because Jesus tells us who he is. And he tells us he's the bread of life. It takes me back to Jesus teaching us how to pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Jesus is our daily bread. Jesus is the bread of life. He tells us who he is. He tells us he's the bread of life. Oh, I want to encourage you to get a notepad and open up your Bible. I, I want to encourage you to join me in answering the question, what does the Bible teach about Jesus? There's over a hundred different names for Christ, and it will draw you into a deeper, stronger relationship as you pray and ponder and meditate on who Jesus is. Remember, Jesus is the Savior. Say it with me. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Jesus is the living Word. Jesus is the Lamb of God. Jesus is the prophet. Jesus is the bread of life. Father God, I thank you. I thank you for the Word of God. I pray that you keep each one safe today. I pray that your grace would go before us, your peace would be within us. And as the sun rises on this early sunrise service, I pray that your face would shine brighter on the heart and the home of each and every one. In Jesus' name, you be blessed. You be blessed. Remember, God loves you, and so do we.